Coming up on show 550, the Model 3 checks out in Australia. The Polestar 2 debuts in San Francisco and Domino's Pizza's electrically powered. Those stories, plus we're talking the Model 3 performance doing repeated runs, a new hybrid from BMW, Mercedes showing off their cars at the motor show, and why GM and VW like full electrics and rather than hybrids those stories and many more coming up on the show today good morning good afternoon or good evening ev news daily for today wednesday 14th of august 2019 it's martin lee here and this is what you missed in the last 24 hours of ev news well thank you as always to myev.com for helping make this show for over a year now my ev have been i think it's over a year i've certainly been talking about my ev uh, we featured them on the program uh, at the end of june last year and then it was around last summer they came on board as a as a supporter of this show and they've just had a big redesign of the website talking to all of the people who have been leaving feedback in the live chat box and the people who have been asking questions about EVs over the last year. My EV is where you can buy and sell and research EVs. They've added a new section of Why Electric. So if you are new and it's something that I've heard quite a lot actually from people who are just getting into EVs like I just want to know the basics like what is it about an EV that makes it go forwards and backwards and how do I charge and so they've added a whole new section why electric and a let's talk section as well so if you want to ask a question from somebody with no skin in the game you know they, they don't know uh, what you know? What you're after? They'll just give you an honest and an and open response. You can ask the experts at myev.com anything you like, even a new dealer section. But we'll talk about that on another show. Let's get into the news today then, and this is a biggie to kick off with. Yesterday, I was talking about the Porsche Taycan and how the Porsche press team had really pulled off a, I think, a fantastic coup to give the first ever non-employee drive of the Porsche Taycan, not to one of the established magazines or TV shows or, you know, let it go on Top Gear or something. They gave it to a YouTube channel, the Fully Charged channel, and they media managed it very tightly. They couldn't just do whatever they wanted in the car. All Johnny Smith was allowed to do was launches. So that whole kind of foot on both pedals, let your foot off the brake, do the launch up to 200 Ks or so, and then repeat it. Now, what they were doing is showing firstly the Porsche can do it over and over again so maybe if you are a Porsche buyer you're thinking about performance track days the autobahn in Germany I know that's a very very small use case but if you are always going down to 60 70 miles an hour until a car pulls in then you floor it and you want to go up to 150 and then someone pulls out so you've got to you know the unlimited autobahn speeds not only were they showing off themselves very well they were actually subtly highlighting what Tesla has suffered with in the past, which was the original Model S and the X not being able to do those ludicrous starts repeatedly without getting a little bit toasty warm in the battery pack. So very subtle, very subtle bit of shade being thrown by Porsche at Tesla without them having to look like the bad guys. They never mentioned Tesla once, but that was the implied message. It, and I personally think it worked really well. Now, a Tesla owner saw that. His name is Patrick Lawson, and he opted to see if his vehicle, he owns a Tesla Model 3 Performance, could do the same. Multiple maximum power launches without any loss of power. Well, by the 10th one he'd done, he said that he was feeling the effects of multiple hard launches, but the car wasn't. Uh, father and son did it over the next 30 minutes. They hit 31 consecutive launches in the Model 3 performance, and he said that at that point they were getting done with the, the sheer physical impact on their bodies, but... Although it was all they could handle, the Model 3 performance, like the Porsche Taycan Turbo, had no throttling at all. The 31st launch they did was a time of 3.11 seconds. Bang on the money. Same territory as, Ty as Porsche Taycan Turbo territory, says Tesla Rati. Uh, now, Lawson's test wasn't exactly the same. Let's be very clear about this. The fully charged channel on a runway in the Porsche doing the 26 runs from 0 to 124 miles an hour. That's 200 Ks. Now, this YouTuber who was doing it, Patrick Lawson, was stopping at 60 or 70 miles an hour. So not the same. Not the same. Wasn't going as fast. Also, it's worth pointing out that Bjorn Nyland, the YouTuber, took his Model 3 onto the auto, the German autobahns and uh, did it... It was either at the weekend or an early Sunday morning or overnight when there were no other cars. And so he just, just mashed the throttle and just went full throttle for as long as he could to try and get the battery. So at what point did the battery overheat? 
spoiler alert, it didn't. So there is some out. It looks like there is some outdated stuff going on here with Teslas, and many people say even with the Raven update, the new updated Model S, even then they can do 10, 20, 30 of these launches. Look, I don't know. I've never seen a video. I've certainly never tried it myself. Uh, well, <laughs> the most I've done is like I've been a passenger in. Uh, when I went to see one of my friends in Miami earlier this year, he has a beautiful new white one. He did about three or four launches in a row, and after that, I was he has a, he has a P100 DL, and I was done. Like physically, I was done. I got out of the car and I had to lean against a post. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, and that was uh, uh, yeah, that was pre Raven his car. So. Uh, and it showed no signs of weakness. So, you know, it's an interesting thing what Porsche have done. Interesting how the Tesla community responds. We'll follow this story. I had to report on that today. It's really interesting. Uh, neither a car, by the way, uh, either an S or a 3 or a Porsche is sitting in my driveway at the moment. Oh, quick sidebar, by the way. You know, I bought a new car a couple of weeks ago, new Renault Zoe. Our neighbours, our neighbours had a burglary last night. And uh, which is always worrying. We live in a really safe area, but I guess these things happen. Uh, first thing, obviously, first thing uh, that I thought about was how's the new car? Absolutely fine. They didn't uh, didn't damage the new car. I don't I don't think a Renault Zoe, a little small city car, looks like the kind of car you're going to try and break into. But anyway, it reminds me as well. By the way, when I had a Tesla Model S for the weekend a few months ago. And I woke up on the Sunday morning and looked out my bedroom window and both front doors were wide open. That freaked me out as well. Again, we live in a very safe area, but I'm like, what's going on here? Has something happened? I don't know. So I don't quite know how we got onto people trying to break into cars, but let's move on. Australian drivers are the subject of our next topic on the podcast today because the checkout opens in Australia and Aussie drivers down under are now able to pay and finalise orders for the Model 3. The Californian EV maker has updated the local website yesterday on Tuesday to allow payment, select pickup, delivery locations, confirm trade-ins according to Aussie website The Driven. Now, whilst it's unknown exactly how many Aussies reserved and are finalising their audio, uh, orders for the Model 3. There were two polls conducted by the Tesla fans of Australia online. They've uncovered a similar phenomenon to buying decisions elsewhere around the world that's known as the Tesla stretch. People go over and above what they've otherwise paid for a car in order to get a key or just get to unlock one with their telephone of course, you can get a key as well. Uh, there are currently a handful of electric vehicles available in Australia and registered EVs down under in Aussie account for less than a percent, less than 1% of the national fleet. The arrival of the Model 3, which could well be today on Wednesday when the, the cars start to arrive, has the potential once again to move the market and create a tipping point. I'm going to pop a link in the show notes, uh, the, the new reduced show notes to that story. Can we talk Polestar next? Polestar is from, that's the performance spin-off bit of Volvo. I think of all the cars on the road at the moment, Volvo have their styling, interior and exterior nailed. I think they look gorgeous. Polestar, again, great design language with that. I think they're up there with just about the best things I see at the moment. And now they've made a public debut of the Polestar 2 in San Francisco. The 2 is the first fully electric Polestar car. Of course, the one was a hybrid. Ongoing launch events in the first seven North American cities that Polestar vehicles will be available. Reservation and prospective owners have been getting their first up-close look at the new car. Were you one of them? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know. Polestar vehicles are going to be available in four cities in the US on day one. Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, and in Canada, Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal, starting in late 2019, says InsideEVs.com. Well, the Polestar 2 has been available for online reservation since earlier this year. Those that placed an order or expressed interest were invited to get their first hands on exposure to the new battery electric vehicle at the San Francisco event, which, by the way, is at the Museum of Modern Art. Hundreds of reservation holders packed the venue to go and look at Polestar 2 up close. Those deliveries are going to be starting, I think, like for the those first seven territories I mentioned. If it's not the end of this year, it's going to be like early 2020. Polestar availability will expand nationally over time. And whilst I hate the phrase anything killer, people call it a Tesla killer, it's the car that I think so far 
has come closest to reminding me of a Model 3. It's a car that you can get on subscription, which is something that they are trying out as well. Polestar are trying out Volvo uh, and, and Geely, the company behind it, are trying out different ways of selling you a car. And I, you know, I do wonder whether the younger buyers, and I don't know how young you would be to buy an expensive very expensive electric sedan but the younger the younger buyers i I would call them the kind of spotify generation the the people that don't have record collections but have spotify that don't have dvd collections but have netflix and amazon prime and that never go to a high street but just order their stuff on the internet i wonder if those people will prefer just to have a flat fee for their car they get the car insurance maintenance tires and then after a year after a month whenever hand it back swap it over and whether they just want that hassle-free. I just think hassle-free is the way forward. What about you? What do you think? Well, one thing we can all agree on, pizza is absolutely delicious. And what about when it gets delivered to your place? Maybe it'll be arriving on an e-bike from now on. Domino's Pizza is adopting cutting-edge delivery vehicles. You are more likely to see one of these in action than the other things they've tried, though, because after successful tests, Domino's is now doing a US-wide e-bike delivery program. It's going to give Domino's stores the choice of using custom rad power electric bikes to deliver your pizza according to Engadget today they are just your typical electric two wheelers at the heart will be a motor that assists with pedaling 25 to 40 miles on a charge 20 mile an hour top speed this is similar to getting your pizza delivered on a moped i imagine in some cities bikes would be quicker as well because you can cut through the traffic or use cycle lanes Uh, they also include front and rear insulated cargo spaces because you've got to keep those 12 inches warm yeah the delivery person could make several stops before having to go back to base and restock and of course with the battery capacity that's all they need Let's talk about, next we'll talk about hybrids, the new BMW 330e. It's a plug-in hybrid, and it has the latest generation of BMW's hybrid technology, a four-cylinder gas engine and a bigger battery. Making its debut appearance in the new 330e plug-in hybrid, it's got extra boost, and this is a new thing. Let me tell you about it. The all-electric range on the plug-in is 50 percent greater 41 miles on the european wltp test cycle that's 66 k's zero tailpipe emissions you can do you can put it into pure ev mode fuel consumption is therefore down by 15 percent and a new feature included as standard in the new bmw 330e is extra boost extra boost is where you can quickly bring in 10 seconds of extra power if you mash the throttle pedal, you vigorously stamp on the accelerator, and you get another 40 horsepower on top of what you would normally get, thanks to the electric battery and the motor, the combination of the electric and the combustion engine working together on tap for an extra 10 seconds over and above what you would have normally for that get-you-out-of-trouble situation, that overtake that you have to make nice and quickly. And who was I speaking to recently that was... Oh, it it probably would have been Ryan from Avid Technology. And I I think it was Ryan anyway. And he was saying that uh, he is a big fan in, in, in his personal circumstance, his commute, his situation, of not only owning a full battery electric vehicle, but also a capable hybrid that operates on EV mode nearly all of the time. Talking about Mercedes next, we've got the Frankfurt International Motor Show in September. That's going to kick off 10th of September. Maybe even the press days happen before that. And I have, I actually, I, I, I would love to go to a motor show this year. Of course, I've just been to Italy for a week, so it becomes increasingly difficult for me then to disappear out of the country for another, another couple of days. But... I'm I'm thinking about it, if I'm honest with you, because I'd like to go and see. Mercedes-Benz are going to be there, and they are going to dominate their stand with the future of mobility. On show for the first time, new plug-in hybrid derivatives and the EQV, that is the all-electric MPV. I'll pop a link to the Daimler press site if you want to read more. Right, finally, let's talk two companies. Let's talk GM, let's talk VW, and why hybrids are not the answer for either of those companies. GM presidents told investors recently and i quote hybrids are just countermeasures to an ice you can't spend money to force the customer to carry around extra stuff they may not need or you can spend your money on getting the real answer which is providing the customer a zero emissions sustainable affordable solution end quote 
Then in an interview with the Wall Street Journal, he amplified his remarks. And I quote, if I had a dollar to invest, I would, would I spend it on a hybrid or would I spend it on uh, a pure electric car? The answer we, that we all know is going to happen is going to get there faster and better than anybody else. Well, Jalopnik points out the Volkswagen, with its commitments to its new platform, its its chassis, the MEB platform, that they're going to use, that Ford, I think, are going to have some interest in with a licensing deal. They're not interested either. VW aren't really talking about plug-in hybrid cars. It's ID platform, which can be used for everything from a small city car to a, uh, you know, a big van or a, a surfy camper van even. That is going to be their focus, a commitment to pure electric cars from VW. Uh, cars like the ID Cross appearing in the US in 2021, the ID Buzz in 2022. Now, this article also notes that Ford and Toyota have both committed to hybrid technology. So maybe we're heading towards a clash of technologies. Maybe that's going to play out over the coming months and years. Will there be one winner or will there be a variety? I I use this example when I'm talking about plugs because people always say, oh, which plug is going to win? Well, maybe maybe this isn't VHS or Betamax. Maybe this isn't Blu-ray or HD DVD. Maybe there is going to be, for a long term, a range of systems, both in terms of the plug sockets out there, but also maybe it hasn't got to be either or. Maybe it isn't just fossil cars and pure EVs. Maybe pure EVs will continue to take off at a a fair old lick. You know, physically, obviously they're quick, but also double-digit growth, you know. uh, But also hybrid technology will suit the needs of some people and some vehicles. Or should we just forget that, forget burning anything and go head-on, to full battery power. I'd love to know your thoughts, by the way. And you can let me know about anything you want anytime by emailing me. And that's hello at evnewsdaily.com, my email address. Same email address to use for this week's question of the week. Set by myev.com. Answer this one, and I'll read your answer out on Sunday. How should car makers advertise EVs? How should car makers advertise EVs? Email me hello at evnewsdaily.com, leave a comment on YouTube or Facebook. Thank you to 235 patrons of the podcast. Oh, I've got two new names to read out. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm useless. Uh, you make this show. Thank you very much for helping fund this show. If you're a patron, I couldn't do it without you. Yes, things like domains are not cheap. Things like streaming and bandwidth are not cheap. It's great having a podcast in growth. Every new listener, though, can cost a little bit more money to serve. You're talking pennies, but then it all kind of adds up. So thank you very much to Patreon. Uh, you know, I was even thinking, you know, there's an event next weekend in the UK called EVs in the Park. Are you coming? It's going to be amazing. It's in Coventry. Find out more details. EVITP is what you need to search for, by the way. EVs in the Park. EVITP uh, next Saturday or, you know, about 10 days away. And I was thinking, have I got enough money in the Patreon account? to make a branded shirt because I think it would look cool if I was at the event and I had a little shirt on, a little polo shirt, a little EV News Daily logo on. (laughs) I know, it's probably a bit sad, but I'm like, I would love that. I would feel, I would feel proper. I'd feel like, oh, this is, this is a proper thing now. You know, next I'll even be getting business cards. But hey, I won't spend it all at once. Thank you very much to my premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, and Avid Technology as well. If you'd like to get any previous shows, the RSS feed for this podcast, the the archive is all there. 549 previous shows. There's some interviews, mostly new shows in there. But hit subscribe to get the new ones first and free and automatically. Say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.